In this topic, we're going to continue to talk about summarizing data, but instead of summarizing data with uh, statistics like mean, median, and mode, we're going to talk about how to summarize a data set with tables and graphs. And all of the tables and graphs that we'll cover in this video have the same purpose. They're all meant to display frequencies. So what is a frequency? Well, a frequency of a, the frequency of a value is just the number of times that that value appeared in a data set. So uh, if a value appears five times, it has a frequency of five. If it appears 10 times, it has a frequency of 10. Um, and here I'll just share one example of frequencies. So imagine that I ask five people to tell me their ages, and their answers are 20, 21, 21, 22, 23. So imagine that this is a survey that I've done. And if this is my data set, then the frequency of 20 is one in my data set because 20 only showed up one time. The frequency of 21 is two because 21 showed up two times, one, two. The frequency of 22 was one because I only have one 21, only one 22 in my data set right here. The frequency of 23 is also one because there's one 23. So the frequency of a value is just the count of the number of times that that value appeared in the data set. So now let's talk about a few different tables and graphs that are used to display frequencies. So these are actually the ones that we'll go over in this video. The first one is a bar graph, which is meant to display frequencies for nominal and ordinal data, basically for qualitative data. We talked about how qualitative data uh, can be nominal or ordinal, depending on if the categories are, are ranked or if they're unranked. And we'll also talk about how to create a frequency distribution table for quantitative data, which means numerical data, numbers like heights, weights, or ages. And we'll also talk about how to create a histogram, which is also for quantitative data. So let's move ahead and talk about how to create a bar graph. So like I said, a bar graph is used to display frequencies for qualitative data, meaning categorical data in which the categories, in which the values are categories rather than numbers. And a bar graph is created by following these steps. First, you create an x-axis that shows every value that appeared in the data. And if, if the data is nominal, I'm sorry, if the data is ordinal and the categories have a natural order, like freshman, sophomore, junior, and then senior, then the categories uh, have to follow that order on the x-axis. Uh, because if they're out of order, it just doesn't look very nice. It wouldn't look very nice to have a bar graph in which the x-axis says freshman, uh, senior, sophomore, junior. It just would look very disorganized. So if the, if the data is ordinal, the categories on the x-axis have to follow the uh, correct order from lowest to highest. And if the, if the data is nominal and the categories don't have any ranking to them and they're just categories, then it doesn't matter uh, how the categories are ordered on the x-axis. It, it's up to you to decide what order the categories should follow. So imagine that I'm doing a survey and I'm asking people for their college major. And imagine that the, the, the categories that appear in my data set are psychology, um, sociology, economics, and business. It would be up to me to decide what order I want to put those categories in on my x-axis. So my x-axis could be psychology, business, economics, sociology. I could put sociology first and then economics and then business. Um, it's up to me because any order would look fine in my graph. The categories don't have uh, a fixed or um, order that everyone agrees on. So yeah, and the second step after creating the x-axis is to create a y-axis with tick marks. So um, these tick marks are the frequencies of the value. So if a bar goes up to the first tick mark, it means that that value has a frequency of one. If it goes up to the second tick mark, it has a frequency of two, and so on. And after you create the y-axis, what you do is you draw a bar above each tick mark on the x-axis to show the frequency of that value. And in a bar graph, the, the bars don't touch each other. That's, a, that's just a, a formatting 
that, that people follow uh, when, they, when you make bar graphs. I think that it's really just meant to emphasize the fact that the values are categories and not um, continuous, uh, not a continuous variable like age, where a person can be anywhere along the number line. But, uh, but the bar is not touching is really just a formatting issue that, pe that people have agreed on. So now let's go to our first example of making a bar graph. So imagine that 15 people are asked to name their favorite colors and their answers are green, blue, and so on, all 15 of these colors. And we want to make a bar graph to show the frequencies in our data set. Well, what we would do first is just list out all of the answers that appeared in the data, all of the categories. And it turns out that they're blue, green, red, yellow, brown, orange. Then we would make our um, y-axis with our tick marks. And the highest frequency is 5 in our data set because green appears five times, which would mean our y-axis has to go up to five in order for this bar to have a tick mark for it to go along with. That's why I had it go up to five. So now what we do is we make a bar for each um, category. We have, to, we have to count the number of times each category appears and get the frequency and then make a bar for the frequency. So let's count the blues. We have one, two, three. There's three blues in this data set, which would mean that blue has a frequency of three and it goes to the third tick mark. Now let's try to count the greens in this data set up here. One, two, three, four. I think I missed one. Oh, right here. One, two, three, four, five. There's five greens. So green has a frequency of five, and its bar will go up to the fifth tick mark right here. So green appears more often than blue, which is why green has a higher tick mark. I'm sorry, that's why green has a higher bar than blue does. And now I just continue on and, and do the same thing for red, yellow, brown, and orange, and then I'm done making the bar graph. Now let's look at one more example. So now I, I've done an imaginary survey. And I've asked 12 people to name their grade levels. And these are their 12 answers. And remember, if the, if the variable is ordinal, then the categories have to follow the correct order on the x-axis. So in this case, my order has to be freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. In my first example, the, the order could be whatever I wanted because the data was nominal. It was categories that don't have a ranking. But now, since it's ordinal, it does have to be following the correct order. So freshman comes first. And it looks like in my data set, we have one, two, three, four, five freshmen. So this goes up to five. We have one sophomore. So this goes up to one. And looks like four juniors and two seniors. And that finishes the graph. Now let's talk about something called a frequency distribution table. So a frequency distribution table is a table that shows the frequency of each value in a set of quantitative data. So when you think of quantitative data, think of numbers like ages, heights, weights, incomes, rather than categories. And to make a frequency distribution table, you follow these steps. First, you create a column of numbers that starts at the lowest value and goes all the way up to the highest value, not skipping over any numbers. It has to be every number from the highest up, from the lowest up to the highest, not skipping over anything. And that column is labeled with an X. Then what you do is you create a column of numbers that shows the frequency of each value in, the, in that X column. And this column is labeled with an F. F means frequency. So here's our first example of making a frequency distribution table. So we have a set of quantitative data. Uh, I've asked 10 people how many siblings they have. And I have these 10 answers. What I do first is I make an X column that starts at the lowest value and goes up to the highest value. So if you look back at the data set, you'll see that the lowest number that appeared is a 1, and the highest number is a 6. So my X column starts at 1 
and goes all the way up to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And my F column just shows the frequency of each X value. So just to show you where I got these numbers from, um, let's start here and count the number of ones uh, in this data set up here. So we have one, two, three ones. That's why one has a frequency of three. Now let's count the number of twos in this data set. Well, the twos are right next to each other, and it looks like there's one, two of them. So there's two twos, which would mean two has a frequency of two. Now let's move down and count the number of threes. Well, in this data set up here, three never appears, so it has a frequency of zero. That's why I put a zero there. Remember I said we can't skip over any values, which would mean that the three still has to go in the X column, but we just give it a frequency of zero in the F column to show that it never appears. So really what you're doing here is you're listing out every number in the X column from lowest to highest. You're listing out every number that appeared in the data from the lowest value to the highest value that appeared. Then what you do is you, you take each number in the X column and count the number of times that appeared in the data, and you take your count and put it in the F column. So basically all this table is telling us is that we have three ones. It's telling us that the data set has three ones, two twos, no threes, three fours, one five, and one six. Now let's look at one more example. So here, let's look for the lowest value. It looks like it's a one, and the highest number that appeared is a seven, which would mean that our X column is going to go from one to seven. And now what we're gonna have to do is move down the X column and count the number of times each value appears in the data set. So let's start by counting the ones. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four ones. So one has a frequency of four. Now let's count the twos. Well, we have one, two twos. So two has a frequency of two. And I just keep doing this all the way down until I reach seven and then it's finished. And now let's talk about something called a histogram. So um, a histogram shows the exact same information that a frequency distribution table shows, but it takes it and puts it in a graph instead of a table. So it's the same information, but in the form of a, of a graph. So um, a histogram is a bar graph that shows the frequency of each value in a set of quantitative data. And a histogram is created by following these steps. And the steps are really similar to making a bar graph. So first you create an x-axis that starts the, at the smallest value and ends at the largest value. And then after that, <clears throat> well, when you do this first step, you can't skip over any numbers. So just like when you were making a frequency distribution table, you can't skip over any numbers, even if that number never appears in the data. Then what you do is you create a y-axis with tick marks, just like you did for a bar graph. Then just like for making a bar graph, you draw bars. You draw a bar above each tick mark on the x-axis to show the frequency of that value. And in a histogram, the bars do touch each other. And that's just to emphasize that the values are quantitative and not simply categories. So um, let's look at our first example of making a histogram. So now imagine that I've asked 10 people how many classes they're taking this semester, and I get these 10 answers. Well, first what I do is I make an x-axis that starts at the lowest value in the data, which is one, and ends at the highest value in the data, which is four. And next I make my y-axis with tick marks, and since my highest bar is four, is four I have to go up to four as on my uh, y-axis. And next I make a bar for each tick mark. So first what I have to do is count the ones in the data set up here. So it looks like one, two, three, four ones. 
which would mean that this bar goes up to four, the four tick mark. Um, it looks like we have one, two, three twos. So two goes up to the third tick mark. We only have one three up here, which would mean that this bar stops at one. And we have two fours, so this bar goes up to two. And then we're done. And just one more example. Notice how there's a gap in the histogram. I'll talk about why that gap is there in just a second. So we, we do the same steps we did before. So let's count the number of ones up here. One, two, three. There's three of them, which would mean that this bar goes to three right here. There are no twos. Uh, two has a frequency of zero, which would mean that there's no bar for two. It's just a gap. It's an empty space. So you, if two never appears, you can't just skip over two and go one, three, four, five, because the number line wouldn't look very nice. So you have to include a two right here, but you just leave a gap for to say that it never appears. So that's the second example of a histogram. And in the next part of this video, we'll talk about how to make two other types of graphs um, called a frequency distribution table and a grouped, I'm sorry, a grouped frequency distribution table and a grouped histogram.